Today I'm going to show you my Emacs Baby Hawk 03. Then we're going to go out to the flight park and run it through some gates. Then we're going to come back here and I'm going to show you some 3D parts that I developed that'll make this little guy even better. The main reason I purchased this over a five inch quad was to have something that was lighter weight, easier to practice with, and more forgiving if you have a crash. I was a big fan of the Tiny Hawk because that thing would take a licking and keep on ticking as they say. And that's a reference to an old Timex commercial for those of you who aren't old enough. Timex, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. But this actually is just as durable, at least it has been for me, except for one small thing with the antenna. And I'm gonna show you later on in the video how I remedied that. But overall design, it works really well. Not a big fan of the frame with the X-T30 coming out of the front, but I'm sure they had their reasons behind that. A lot of the manufacturers are going more towards a front uh, battery connection to try to get the voltage away from the uh, DJI antenna to make it more reliable as far as that's concerned. I do really like the DJI 03 air unit because of the vision. As you'll see in the video that's coming up here from the flight park, I pretty much used nothing but the goggle video. I didn't use any of the video from the 03 air unit. I did have a problem when I was recording and for some reason I didn't get the footage on the 03 air unit. And I think it's because I didn't stop the recording before I actually landed the quad. But I am using the remote controller too to fly this and I haven't had any problems with signal loss or anything like that. It's a very easy, seamless way to get this little guy in the air. Now, the frame itself is a one piece frame on the bottom here. And as you can see, they've actually put a clear protector plate over it to protect the all-in-one ESC um, flight controller, which is nice. The DJI air unit is sitting pretty much right down on top of the flight controller. And I would like to see a little bit more space in there. And they've put this little cumbersome piece of frame in here that holds the air unit up off of the flight controller and then gives just enough room for the strap. And really, I would like to see a little bit taller standoff in there to make a little bit more breathing room for the flight controller. But that's just my personal opinion. I don't design these, I just enjoy flying them. There is a couple other things that I wasn't a fan of as far as I'd like to see a little bit better camera protection, but I haven't had any problems. And I always put these clear UV protectors on the front of the camera. The problem that I have had is with this antenna, and we're gonna go over that a little bit later. But other than that, this has been pretty much a bulletproof quad with these AVAN props on it, you can just keep on rocking and rolling. I've only had uh, to replace two of these and I've had this a little over a month and probably, I would say conservatively 30 flights. As far as flights are concerned, I've tried a bunch of different batteries. I've used these 650s, the 550s and the 850s. This 850 is a lower pro design and I kind of like that initially, but what I actually went with and uh, purchased several of are these Tattoo 850 batteries. I like these a lot. They don't have any sag when you do a punch out and you'll see that here shortly in the, the flying field video. Um, they're very reliable, they're cost effective and they just seem to work well. They have nice long uh, leads on them, which is a good thing because then you can tuck them in places. But uh, overall, I'm very pleased with this uh, as far as the price that it costs for what you get. I don't think it's a really good value, but it's all in the eye of the beholder. Does it do what I purchased it to do? Absolutely, it certainly does. So let's go ahead and take it out to the field and get this thing in the air. The wind is up and down here today. Uh, let's jump on over here to the flag. You can see that it's it's kind of loafing. It's uh, not too bad right now. Let's see if we can hit some gates here. My fingers are freezing because it's only about 47 degrees right now. So uh... the quad is very responsive. 
This is a Tattoo 850 battery 4S, obviously, because that's the way the quad comes. Let's go ahead and try a punch out. No sag on the battery. Very responsive. These are the larger Brush FPV pop-up gates. They're pretty much designed for five inch, not this little guy here. Uh, but uh, we've got a smaller one there, as you see. Let's see if we can get through that here. And the answer is yes, we can get through it, but not very cleanly.
usually run the battery down to 3.5 or close to it. Uh, it's cold out, so I probably don't want to do that to this battery right now. It's 3.66, but as you can see, we're at six minutes and 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and land for the sake of time here, and then we'll jump back into the studio. And uh, of course now the wind blows me away. Where is the landing pad? Where is it at? Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. And I hit the landing pad. Now that we're back in where it's a little warmer, I want to talk about the bad. The bad is not that big a deal, but it's a big deal if you're out at the flying field or you just want to have fun flying around your house. And it's this antenna. And I've watched other reviews on uh, YouTube as well. And people are saying that this antenna gets shoved down into the frame, which it certainly does. And this one that's on here has been replaced and you can already see that it has a bunch of scarring on it already. The original antenna is this one here that's toast. I lost a connector on it. The tube looks like it's a straw that someone's been chewing on. It's just terrible. The other thing that I don't like about this quad was the battery strap. The battery strap after literally 10 flights, the traction pad is coming apart on it and it's got frays all over it. So I replaced the battery strap with a carbon fiber battery strap off of one of my other quads. And the big thing that I really don't like about this, you would think with a, a quad of this price, it would come with some landing feet. I know they want to keep the weight low on the quad, but these are expensive. And I don't like the fact that when you land on a hard surface or even take off on a hard surface or concrete or something like that, it's damaging the carbon fiber. It makes the screws heads uh, get all messed up and you can't get them out. And I just really didn't like it. So what I did is I jumped in the Tinkercad and I designed a few parts, I got on Thingiverse, and I found the landing feet. So let's go ahead and show you those. Here's the pineapple edition, we're gonna call it here. And the first thing I'm gonna show you here are these landing feet. Uh, I will put a link in the description to the STL files on Thingiverse. Make sure you give the designer uh, some props for it. Uh, he worked really hard on these, I guess he did. I don't know if he's an engineer, but he had to obviously scan in the frame because these things fit like a glove. In his description, it says to print them out of PLA. I'm a big TPU fan, so it has a little cushioning. The front ones clip over the legs and stay on fine, but the back ones don't have a little lip on it. So they need to be retained somehow. So what I did is I used this B7000 glue, which is kind of like a high-tech rubber cement. It's used to uh, put cell phones back together. If you take the uh, screen off of your cell phone and need to glue it back on, that's the type of glue they do. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. It's worked really well. I've just put a couple of drops on it, stuck the foot on there, let it sit overnight, and it's been just fine. Uh, the nice thing is, is you don't have to take these feet off to take a motor off or do a repair or even just check to see if the tightness of the screws is good. Because as we know, as you fly, the screws get loose. So these are excellent feet and uh, make sure you give him uh, some props. The next problem I had was is the balance lead connector wanted to jump into the props. I got tired of it. Uh, flopping around, having to get it underneath the strap itself here. So I designed a little piece that actually goes right onto the strap and stays connected to the strap here. And we'll pull the battery all the way out of it here. And you can see it's permanently attached to the strap here and it won't go anywhere. But the big thing that I've done here is the antenna protector tube. And what I actually did is I took took this little guy apart and I scanned the top plate in with my regular conventional scanner. I brought it in the Tinkercad and then I worked around with different designs. I actually had the Emacs bottom uh, antenna support so I incorporated that into the design. And so it actually is the same length and everything but it now supports itself uh, really well here. In fact, you can pick the quad up by the antenna and usually most people don't want to do that. Even with the battery on the quad here, it'll support the weight of the battery itself. So you can pick it up by the antenna with the battery on it. And with this 850 battery, that's a little over 250 grams. So that's pretty good. I haven't given it a lot of flight time with this on it because I didn't want to mess it up for the video, but I'm pretty sure this, this design is going to work really well. I'm going to put a link to the description. I'll put these on my OneDrive file so you can just download them. Feel free to use them. Uh, give them off to your friends, your neighbors, but don't give them to your enemies because we don't want them to have a cool quad either. So 
hopefully these little additions to this Tiny Hawk. Uh, the other thing that I did too, I almost forgot, on the Emacs camera support, there were two little ears here on it, which I'm really not sure what they are. If anybody knows what the two little ears on the uh, stock camera mount are for, maybe it's for a different camera. But with the DJI 03 Air unit, you don't need those, so I took those off and I have the STL file for this mount if you want to print a new one in a different color. It's nice and clean that way. The other thing that I forgot to mention in the first part of this video was when I received uh, the original one here, the camera would not stay in the place. I started flying it and the camera would start to droop. I checked the screws were fully tightened in and bottomed out. So the, the file itself, the uh, 3D printed file, wasn't thick enough for the length of the screws. Instead of looking for other screws, I went ahead and got um, some plastic washers because I really didn't want to use a metal washer. So I'll leave a link in the description below for the hardware kit that I got. It seems to be a really neat little piece where you can have a lot of little different uh, plastic washers and standoff tubes and things like that. And it's very inexpensive. It's a good thing to have. I've pulled parts from it over the years and it, it's a neat piece to have. So hopefully all these little parts here, and I'll even include the um, wire protector for the carbon fiber. So if you wanna change the colors, I plan on putting these red parts on this one here, so I'll have a pineapple edition and then I'll have a red one as well. All we need to do is get the Avon props to come in different colors and I'll be the happiest camper there is. If you've made it this far in the video, I certainly would appreciate a good old thumbs up there and maybe subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And don't forget to leave me your comments below. One thing that I'm real interested in is this has been out for about a year now. Has Have you all broken any of these lower frames? Thanks again for watching and we'll definitely catch you on the next one.